What's up, everybody? Welcome to Totally Games Cast, partnership between the Easy Peasy and Totally Trey, right here on twitch.tv slash, slash Totally Trey Live, like you're watching right now. Or you could be watching this on YouTube on all the Easy Peasy's, on the Easy Peasy's YouTube channel on Friday morning. So, we plan to do this every two weeks, so every Wednesday from about 4.30ish till about 5.30ish, and just go, going to specifically be talking about all things video games. We've got some cool stuff. I got some awesome gaming news. I got a new console. Uh, thank you, Black Friday sales. I uh, played a game, uh, binged it all of Thanksgiving weekend. Trey's been playing a new game, a single player experience that he wants to chat about. And fall, we got some Fallout 76 news, some Smash Bros. Ultimate news. Trey's been killing it on the dock. So, Trey, I'll pop it to you. What do we want to start with this week? Well, today we are going to start with my review of Sunset Overdrive. Um, I put in probably about 12 hours so far. It's super fun, super fun game. It's like a combination of Borderlands plus Tony Hawk plus GTA, all sorts of like weird crossover vibes. And they even have kind of like the old school Tony Hawk soundtrack style, like punk, fast punk music, you know? The punks and the character design is yeah, super yeah. close to like Tony Hawk Underground. Oh yeah, no, totally. They like really like, it's super brightly colored is what I love about it. And like the character, uh, what is it called? Character creator? That shit is hilarious. Like my character straight has like booty shorts with like a, a shirt that doesn't go across his like stomach so it's like a stomach shirt and then he's wearing like a bandan like a fucking bandit mask with like blue purple hair and he, he looks hilarious yeah. anyway it's like been super fun um basically the premise of the game is um energy drinks are causing a zombie apocalypse essentially and they everyone's just turning into these mutant zombies and uh Basically, you're in the awesome apocalypse, so you're having a good time. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> What'd you think about the like dialogue? I felt like there's always so much funny, witty banter going on between the main character and. Oh my god, everyone. it's cracking me up, dude! Like they like have good humor in it, and then like also they're not afraid to get a little bit raunchy with it, you know, and like cuss and be funny, you know, like kind of GTA style again, but uh, pretty funny. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so it reminds me of Jet Set Radio. Oh, yeah, for sure. definitely. That's what Gail said. She, okay. like, walked in. She's like, are you playing Jet Set? I'm like, no. Even the colors, like, the popping colors. No, uh, like, everything about the game is pretty funny, honestly. Like, um, the guns, the my favorite gun is still the Flaming Compensator, which is just, um, it has, like, two coconuts on it, and then it's, like, a blunderbust, but it just looks like a dick and balls, basically, and, uh deals mad DPS and burns the enemies or whatever. But, yeah. you know, anyways. Um, so I bought my Xbox One back in 2014, I believe. So a year or so after it originally had come out just because of this game. Like oh, I, really? Yeah, I'd seen like a review or on IGN and, and a whole bunch of awesome coverage beforehand. And I was like set. I was I was sold. And this is this is Insomniac Games, right? Uh, I um, have no idea. Okay. Well, yeah, it's, it's in uh, Insomniac games and so they've had an awesome awesome history with making um what's it called the sony exclusive i can't it's, it's escaping me right now but they just recently made spider-man for oh, playstation really? 4 yeah so i'm always i'm big in traversal games i love single player experiences where i'm able to like get all these experience gain these levels and then just be able to like run through the city like crazy like yeah it's kind of funny that they did um uh, Spider-Man and this game because that was originally an Xbox One exclusive and then they've now moved to Sony for a Sony exclusive. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's it, interesting to me that the game came out four years ago and that makes a lot more sense why there wasn't a bigger hype train on Twitch for it because I was like, I was playing it the day it came out and there was really only like 200 people watching the game and I was, I was like, that's really weird to me because this game is like, cool and fun to watch and stuff but uh that makes more sense to me because it's kind of a dated experience for twitchy watchers right anyway, you know yeah for sure and i just love how xbox microsoft's doing such a good job putting those exclusives that were originally had come out for the xbox one onto pc yeah just yeah, like yeah. man they're gonna be that's gonna be a really really strong aspect of that the of the xbox Scarlet or the next Xbox yeah. is that you're going to be able to play on your PC or your Windows 10 PC and your Xbox One just and you're going to be able to change and, and you know your save's going to transfer to both. I just hope we start getting the um, 
PC, uh, what's it called? The PC ports quicker because like it, four years is a pretty long time to wait for a game. Yeah. Like um, Red Dead, I believe it was a year before we got a PC port after it came out for uh, the console. GTA um, Five, you had, you were just saying, was like two years, right? Yeah, it was something ridiculous like that, you know. And um, it'd be nice if we got them a little quicker, but at the same time, I think it takes a little bit more work just because the higher FPS and stuff like that yeah. is probably just takes longer to set up or whatever. But um, it'd be nice to get them quicker anyway. Yeah, I think it was in, in <clears throat> Infamous. So it was a PlayStation 3 franchise, Sony exclusive, that was awesome. And you were like... Oh, the, you're a mutant kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, X-Men style mutant, not like monster mutant. But. Exactly, yeah. And it's it's pretty close to Prototype, although Infamous, is everyone thinks, is like way better. Although I love Prototype. Was not a huge PlayStation 3 f- player and not really a huge PlayStation 4 player until just recently. I just finally got one uh, because of the awesome deal on Black Friday, which we're going to be talking about some of our pickups at the end of the show for sure. From Black Friday, crazy deals out there. <laughs> no shit, like Big definitely times. all over. But um, honestly, for me, I watched people play both Infamous and Prototype, and Prototype was way cooler to watch. Like, yeah, I mean, at least in the short term, because like Prototype may not have had like the story and depth that uh, Infamous had, but like Prototype was hilarious to watch people flying through the air, and you just like have like mutant limbs and shit, and you'd be slicing people up and. Way more my style of game. Yeah, like, dude. <laughs> like, and you would like your arm would turn into whatever you wanted it to be, like a yeah. gigantic like <laughs> sledgehammer or something. Like, it was pretty cool. I really did like Prototype. I didn't never finish on 360, but I definitely played it. So that brings me to unless you have some more. To, no, I don't okay, know. cool. So do you plan on completing completely? Finishing oh yeah, it? I'll finish it. I'll finish it up here next week. Okay, cool, awesome. Keep it locked on twitch.tv slash totally trade for that. I actually, like I had just said, I bought a PlayStation 4, one terabyte with pack, packed in Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man packed in, which was awesome because that's like the game I was going to buy a PlayStation 4 for sure. already. But it had they had it on sale on sale of 300 for 200 bucks, PlayStation 4 Slim, I should say. And so I had to pick it up. I mean, I shouldn't because I should be not spending $200 on games at a time. <laughs> but I, I had to. I, I bid it and I bought it. And all Thanksgiving weekend, at, besides seeing family and besides stuffing my fat face, I played that game. I played about 20, 22 hours, which, I mean, it sa- doesn't sound like that much if you put it over like five days. But, I mean, I binge That's like, a lot over five days. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I just, you know, there's some uh, elite gamers out there that probably play 12 hours a day, four days, five days a week. Well, yeah, we got some elite Twitch viewers out there that watch like 40 hours of Twitch. So that's like an interesting stat I actually saw. Like the average Twitch watcher watches like over 20 hours a week. I think it's like 20 to 30 hours or okay. something like that. But Jesus. Yeah. I'm a little bit below the average on Twitch, I would say say then for viewers viewership then but i do watch probably 10 10 10 10 weeks not bad i usually just watch it on the elliptical that's my thing uh but so getting back to spider-man oh man this game is nuts dude so going from red dead which i've only played the first three to four hours of but i and it kind of lost me uh the monotony the slow arduous it felt like almost tanky you know like i'm just so slow i I was kind of turned off on that, at least for this moment, because I just wanted to play a, more of a video game game, if that makes sense. I will get back to Red Dead, though. I'm not going to just give up on it. I mean, of course, it's going to probably win next week at the Game Awards, Game of the Year. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, anyway, though, back with Spider-Man. Dude, that game is a game, a video game. And I mean, I love, and I, we already had just spoken about this a little bit with Sunset Overdrive, that traversal is so much fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Man, swinging Just... through New York City is a blast. And, like, that in itself is amazing. Like, it's 10 out of 10 for, for Traversal by, like, for sure. I think the next <laughs> Spider-Man game, you need to have a skateboard as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. in addition, so you can also get the sick grind moves going as well. But <laughs> You pretty much can grind in a way when you're running up buildings. Sure, you're like kind of like kong like parkour style. Yeah. yeah, you can run straight up buildings, around buildings, wrap around them if you hold the circle. And uh, you can also, like, press L2 and R2 at the same time to... 
jet to a certain spot. So like that's a really cool aspect about this tra- the, the game's traversal is that there's always a reticle reticule in the middle of the screen that you can direct at almost any point, like on top of a car, on top of a light pole, every corner of the building, even every ledge of the building, you can just jet right to it, like pressing R2 and L2, which is perfect if you're try- on a car chase or you're doing something where you have to really get somewhere quick. I mean, yeah, keep it fast paced instead of like, I don't know, making it like so like aim oriented, you know what I mean? That exactly. You can just focus more on like running around. Yeah. What's happening, Doc Smog? What's, thanks for stopping by, brother. What up, man? So we're just talking about Spider-Man. I just got a PlayStation 4, and uh, yeah, I played and beat the game, binged it all on Thanksgiving, and we're just talking about that traversal. So that is, man, I loved it. Very, I loved that part of it. But that's obviously not the whole game. There's amazing storyline. I was yeah, absolutely super surprise like I, I thought going into it okay it's just gonna be some hokey marvel superhero spider-man story um I, he's never i've never really loved him that uh character for the story more just like the the fact that you know he has a mask on so anybody could be anyone could imagine themselves being him and the fact that he got his powers through like some weird situation when he was young you know i like that not like he wasn't born with it. He was just some normal nerdy kid. Yeah. So. I honestly like Spider-Man a lot. Like, especially, like, the character where he's, like, super witty and smart-mouthy, you know? Like, kind of Deadpool style, even though Spider-Man was obviously around before Deadpool. Um, just, like, the smart-mouthiness makes him an interesting character, you know? But uh, Yeah. Yeah, and, dude, this story goes off. So, at first, you think it's all about this one bad guy. The main bad guy. And then... It just blows up. And, like, next thing you know, the entire city, New York City, is just under chaos. And, man, the voice acting is phenomenal. I even put it in our doc doc to give a shout-out to Peter Parker's voice actor. He had a voice actor, and separate from him, he had a, a motion capture actor. So to do all this, so it's all motion captured, which is super awesome. Man, it's, it's tight. <laughs> so the the, di- the dialogue between even just Mary Jane, MJ, and Peter Parker it's, in alone is awesome. But then you got Dr. Octavius and Peter Parker and how that evolves, that how all of his relationships go from zero to 100. It's just amazing. <laughs> uh, so a couple small things. We already talked about the, the traversal and the voice acting. But uh, web slinging, way fun. Let's see here. Boss fights. That's something I do want to talk about. The first... Couple boss fights are a little shaky for me, and then the last, the final boss fight you have is is awesome. But the first, the two right before the last one, um, and I'm not trying to spoil. This is spoiler free, free discussion always, unless we let you guys know ahead of time. <laughs> uh, but the boss fights are a little bit shaky, and as far as like the battling and the fighting is is really great as well. But it does kind of get cumbersome, and you and I would say like even just t- taking two days off. Uh, in there, it kind of felt weird getting back into it. Like, I had to remember how to do certain moves and stuff. Yeah. And for a first iteration of Spider-Man, the move list is phenomenal. I'd love to see them expand it, even double, like, the move list that you can upgrade. This isn't, like, um, kind of based off the old PlayStation 2 Spider-Mans or, like, derivative, like, so the controls aren't, like, similar to that. And so (sighs) isn't this just an evolution of all of that shit or what? I'm pretty sure it is an evolution of... Of that. Oh, hey, what's up, Mitch? Yeah, we got a couple cute babes in the chat. Actually, Doc Smog's got an interesting point. So next Spider-Man game should be future Spider-Man with the uh, Tony Stark suit, hoverboard Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Doing 360 McTwists all day. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I At least that. for me. How about a Marty McFly skin or something? <laughs> Marty McFly. <laughs> so we have that hoverboard. That would be sick, yeah. dude. Oh, my God. I would actually just, like, love... I would play Spider-Man if they had just, like, 10 million different skins you could play it as, you know? Like, I would play it as Donkey Kong. That'd be sick. Or, like, I mean, that's, like, a weird crossover, but, like, just, like, something like that. Yeah, so you know how Spider-Man has a billion different iterations. Yeah. Miles, yeah. the Miles version of Spider-Man, to Spider-Man 2099. Yeah. The, the suit that he gets from... Iron Man, even you know yeah, Tony yeah. Stark. So you can actually throughout the ki- the game unlock about 20, 25 different skins, Thanks. including the Spider Man from PlayStation Two skin, which I still have unlocked. I don't know how to do it, but I've seen. <laughs> you can, so it's like just like a blocky version of Spider Man, but Ew. it looks hilarious. <laughs> it looks hilarious. He's swinging. I love through. shit like that. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's just fun. 
Uh, the game is just phenomenal. There's collectibles, geez. So I, I come from Crackdown, the Crackdown world, where I love getting collectibles in a game where you can traverse everywhere. You know, you can go so high up on the, the skyscrapers, jump all the way down, swing around 12 different blocks, and you can find all these different things. There's like 13 different collectibles you can get. The game is jam-packed. I'm probably not going to platinum it, which means, you know, get all of the collectibles, beat everything, pretty much unlock everything. Yeah, that's not my thing. I don't no. know. I don't fuck around with that. Such a waste of time. It's very rare for me to do so. The last game I um, completed 100% was probably Fallout 3. I don't think I even have on the Xbox One. Pro I, pff, dude, like, probably Mega Man X for me. Oh, dude. yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's been a while, dude. Yeah. I just, I've never really cared enough like it's like why would i want all of these imaginary items that don't really like carry on to the next game i'm playing you know like with wow and shit i would definitely always like get every collectible like everything because it carried on to the next expansion and shit like that but for like games like spider-man it's like well i mean it doesn't go to spider-man 4 or whatever the next one is you know yeah uh the the collectibles do like lead to how you can unlock all the different and upgrade all your gadgets. So that's another thing, man. The gadgets, th those add an element to that. I think you may actually get annoyed by almost because they do they do make like the combat pretty easy in some parts where like you can just okay, I'm about to die. I can just revert to using all of these gadgets and now I'm safe. Yeah. I can see you kind of getting a little bit annoyed at that, but each suit also unlocks a special power that you can unlock. It's it's really phenomenal game. I can't stress enough how great that story was. Like I was just mind blown, and the the final boss sequence is really fun. It's, <laughs> it, man, I uh, really want to play some more action games, action adventure games. You know, I've really found that those are like my favorite kinds of games. Not. I'm not like only playing these multiplayer FPSs or third person shooters anymore. Like. Next game I want to get into is God of War for sure because God I want to follow that same same trail like all these great games that came out for PlayStation 4 this year. Oh yeah, no, God of War I heard uh, got some great reviews. I like hack and slash games, so that's um, a franchise I never really got into, but I know I would enjoy, you know. Yeah. Um, I I think I actually own like 1 and 2 for like PS2, but I just there's this one sequence at the very beginning of the game, and you know how I am, dude. Like, if it's, like, not just, like, perfect, I don't want to fuck with it. So, like, there's this very, the very first sequence in God of War 1 where there's these archers shooting you, and you have to move these boxes to, like, just climb over them. But the archers can break the boxes, and they broke every box, and I couldn't go to the next part, and I was like, this what? game is fucking dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> so the remake is... What I have to look forward to is more so, like... Uh, oh hey what's up Doc Smog's coming in the stream here saying he watched a lot of God of War streams so epic yeah dude it's uh we've been talking about the last two episodes of the Get Totally Games cast where this game is gonna probably is be the only thing that can really compete with Red Dead Redemption for best game of the year game of the year so I, okay, I bought Red Dead I had some like frustration early on with that game as well where I kept resetting at uh Restarting the mission instead of wait restarting at the checkpoint and kind of gave up on the first mission because I did the same thing Two separate times, but um, I've you gotta been read watching directions, Trey. Yeah, I do fuck directions, bro, <laughs> but I like <laughs> I Ended up watching some streams like to kind of like be like, okay, is this something I want to continue with at all? Do I care enough to even play through this another 20 minutes the third time through and uh, I, I've watched a lot of it, and I don't really think it's my kind of game. Like, because like you said, like I like like action adventure games. I don't want to change clothes and shit. Not not really my thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it. I think somebody put it really, really well on on Twitter or whatever. Like some sort of like games industry person I was listening to, uh, or. It was a podcast. It was somewhere. Somewhere I heard this, and it puts it perfectly. You can't really just play God, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 for, like, an hour. You have to invest, like, two or three hours because you may not even get to an area where you can save. You got this, like, the story missions where you have to go from point A to point B. And it takes so long to do everything. You have to wash your hair. You got to, you know, you got to <laughs> trim your beard. You got to do all Dude, this. I don't even, like wash or trim my own. I shaved today, so, I mean, like, I'm doing good, but, like, generally, I'm... <laughs> Honestly, since I've, like, quit my job or whatever, like, I fucking working on my personal hygiene, and I've been, like, a lot cleaner, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got that extra time. Time will do it. Uh, but 
other games like Spider-Man, I could just dive in. I drove in and played for 45 minutes, like, before we went and did some Thanksgiving stuff. Yeah, because you can Thanksgiving. knock out a mission and then yeah. like, go, go Or you can go get seven collectibles. Like, the game, those kinds of games, I'm really, I mean, dude, that's why I loved all year I've been playing the Switch. Because I have the ability to play everywhere. A car rides, we're on a trip somewhere. I mean, in the hotel, like, before we go out. I mean, on the couch next to Lydia when she's watching Netflix. Yeah. That's clutch. Dude, I've never undocked my Switch and, like, taken it somewhere. Whoa. Or, and I've, like, also never, like, played it while, like, Gail's watched, like, TV. Like, um, mostly because Gail wants me to, like, focus my attention on what she is. You know, like, it doesn't count as, like, us time if I'm, like doing my own thing, you know, so... So, dude, that actually brings a pretty cool tangent. I mean, we don't usually talk about our relationship stuff, but (laughs) uh, I feel the exact same way. I'm like the Gale when it comes to that kind of thing. Like, if we are going to watch a movie that we bought on iTunes, we bought somewhere, we paid to rent it even, I want 100% from both of us, no phones out, no (laughs) Switch, no nothing, no laptops. But if it's just Lydia watching, like, the 78th iteration of... Uh, Vikings, you know, like that kind of sure. time period, mediev- medieval time period. Like, I'm gonna be like, whatever. I'm going to play Switch, or I'm gonna be on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. I, I mean, she's honestly really cool about like. There, there was a a moment where I was obsessed with Pokemon, and like I was, it was uh, occupying a lot of my like free time. Like, and Pokemon is such a fucking waste of time. I fall into this trap all the time especially like comp- i get like obsessed with competitive pokemon so i'm like out there breeding 10 million fucking pokemon for no reason but anyways she was pretty cool during that phase and didn't give me a whole lot of shit like very minimal shit so shout out to gail for being awesome yeah but, that's uh, not what i'm saying but <laughs> uh as far as like either way no i mean that's the same with me where um especially if it's like a movie that i'm trying to like show gail that's yeah. like uh meaningful to me in some way right. i'll be like Psh, like knock a phone out of her hand <laughs> like, yeah, yeah let's go what you doing here Viking War was great. <laughs> you know, Doc's mom is saying that Vikings was great. He's totally right. Like, Lydia, absolutely, she's my fiance. I don't know if Doc's mom would know that. Uh, no. Okay, okay. I didn't know if he was somebody we knew in real life. Or no, like, okay. no, no, no. He's just a brother. Okay, what up, what up, homie? But <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. But she, she's totally uh, loves that kind of, like, p- time period. So I'm just stuck watching, like, every single one. Right now she's watching a new one that she's already almost done with. So she just loves binging those kinds of shows. Yeah, definitely. And, like, that's her thing, you know? Like... I like playing every single Mario game that comes out. <laughs> yeah, she okay. likes to watch every medieval time piece. <laughs> yeah, every single one. Awesome. <laughs> but dude, we got to talk about the biggest disappointment in gaming for me this year, for sure, Fallout 76. Oof, it did not go good um, for the reviews anyway. Um, there's hope. Bethesda made a big apology already about it, saying that there are going to be bug fixes and updates to the game to kind of make up for their mistakes so i mean props to them for being i i would say it was kind of they apologized for being quiet um because there was like the game was released and i think how long has it been out now one week it's been out for like two weeks two it weeks? came out right before thanksgiving so there was like radio silence from bethesda for like the initial first week and then they issued an apology or whatever for being quiet but um i think they were wanting to let it pan out and see if people would it was just an initial complaint wave that, like, I'm sure happens with a lot of great games, you know. And maybe um, waiting to see if, like, that was just an initial reaction to the game. But, uh, ugh. Yeah. Hate to say it. Hate to see it, too. But Yeah. Um, so Fallout 3 is my favorite single-player experience from the last generation. Fallout 4 was definitely one of those things. That I, uh, oh, those games I loved and I never actually beat. I never completed the game, but I put in like 70, 80 hours. I even have some like let's plays on, on the, the channel. Like, I just loved it. I love capturing. I love like the aspect of walk, going somewhere, discovering somewhere new, hearing that cha-ching when you discover <laughs> somewhere new, getting that new gun or getting that bobblehead. Like, oh, I love it. But man, so what's the biggest complaints that we're hearing? Um, honestly, mostly bugs. Like, there's a huge amount of bugs in the game right now, um, and that ranges from like AI issues to like pathing, which is kind of an AI issue. Um, textures not loaded properly. Um, people are really hating the fact that there's no 
NPCs in the game. They're saying it feels super dead and empty because there's no NPCs. And like the only NPCs I've seen in the game, and I've, I've watched a good amount of it, are robots. And it's really hard to like want to do something for like a robot. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean, yeah. brother? What's up, podcast? How's it going, man? The game sucks. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, no, it hasn't been getting like uh, great reviews. Is that brother. Battle Pawn by B- BF Five? What's that? What's that? B- Battlefield Five. What are you talking about? Oh, B- Battlefield Five. The game sucks. Oh, my buddy was saying he enjoyed Battlefield Five. Honestly, man, I thought you were talking about Fallout, but yeah, he was saying that the sniping in that game is honestly super duper sat- satisfying. <laughs> Well, that sucks, dude. Is that a Steam <laughs> game? Can you at least return it? Like, within... I've returned so many fucking games, dude. Really? It's unreal. Have like, you heard about the controversy with Fallout 76? The guy that tried to return it? The video went viral. He takes the game to GameStop, tries to return it. They have a policy. No returns. No... And if... And it, there's, like, some contingencies where you can return it for, like, store credit or something. The dude wants cash. He freaks out. Completely trashes the whole place. Post pushes <laughs> down... Bunch of signage oh, rips apart. Dude, I saw that. That you guy think you could pull it up, up? <laughs> dude. Oh yeah, let's pull it up, dude. Okay, so while he <laughs> while he tries to pull it up, homies, uh, another thing that I was I heard about this game, Fallout seventy six, is that since there's no NPCs, people are freaking out about it. what they want to is to just create their own. So people are becoming NPCs in the game, and they're like standing outside of the vault, giving people free guns, saying, "Hey, this is the best path." It's crazy, dude. People are hungry for a real Fallout experience. <laughs> Here's this video, though. Trey's popping it off. Hold on one sec here. I, I didn't have this set up very well. Uh, yeah, but dude, we gotta have the, the homies see this if they haven't. <laughs> this is nuts. This shit is comedy. It goes viral. Can they hear it, too? Yeah, they can hear it. Cool. <laughs> Trying to return that Fallout 76, man. The rage is real. Are we sure that's the game he's trying to return? Yeah. For sure. I'm um, pretty sure. I'm like 99%. Oddcast, I'm so I'm totally with you. They won't... Oh, man. This is where he goes off. Dude, this is what Oddcast did when he found out he couldn't return uh, Battlefield. Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, Van Wedge? What? What's going on, brother? <laughs> so jealous of, look at this look at the end this is my favorite part the dude's recordings is like oh damn <laughs> what, dude, what? <laughs> I love it dude I watched it like five times when dude, it went viral so fucking comedy well here's all of our notes for the podcast here you can read those really quick yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit behind the scenes breaking the fourth wall <laughs> Hey, so uh, Van Wedge, what's up, homie? And Oddcast, you said, yeah, you definitely can't return it if you open it and the plastic's broken. And I think that's like a common thing, right? Like you can't return an electronic usually if it's open and used. Yeah, it's a common thing. But like with video games, ah, dude, video games is like such a rocky territory for a return because like Steam has it down to where like if you play like under two hours, you can return it and it's like digital, you know? So it's like all recorded. There's no way to scam it, you know? But... That's a stop. You can just go home, do a 24 hour stream, you know, beat Fallout 76 really quick, run on back, still beat the 24 hour policy, you know, and like be good, you know. But so that's that's the thing. It's like I generally believe people are going to be positive. People are going to be good in the world and they aren't going to like ga- try to game the system. If, they, if there is a small number that probably do. What's happening, Sky? How's your night going, man? Uh, the game sucked. Yeah, no shit, dude. Like, I will have no qualms about returning like shitty indie games like I returned God's Basement I didn't give a shit I actually kind of liked that game but like I was getting too scared (laughs) I was like I can't keep putting myself through this dude yeah (laughs) but shit (laughs) <laughs> dude I'll buy it from your oddcast just mail it to my P.O. box and I'll send you the cash right after I promise you <laughs> hey that's the homie right here looking out <laughs> so the game's been crashing uh, the, the whole thing with the NPCs people are the guest givers all one dimensional robots we got that 
Man, so I will say that the people are loving like the the bosses in the game, like Mothman. People are really loving that aspect where yeah, there's a bunch of like secret like it's not just Death stalk- Stalkers, right? Yeah, no, people are liking um, some of the unique monsters that haven't been in the franchise before, or they may have been in the franchise before, but like at least done it in like a different way. And um, people are saying that it's like a mini Monster Hunter almost for like those fights, and I, I guess that just means that there's some mechanics. I haven't seen any of those cool fights in my time in the streams but uh monster hunter that's a game that's actually on my wish list uh dude it's like you're running in circles man i mean i think i probably told you this last time um but it's like you kill one monster and uh i I don't know you spend a lot of time hunting one monster and the whole game is very repetitive and you go back to town craft gear go back hunt monsters go back craft gear and it's like doesn't feel really rewarding, you know, because you're not going to like go fight like players or something. You like go to fight the same monsters again. Yeah. So homie uh, Clem, he actually got a PlayStation Four as well. Uh, same deal as me. He got Spider Man. He and he, him and I just kind of want to play a game that's like cooperative, story based, and maybe grinding like that, doing some of that stuff. So Monster Hunter definitely falls within that. The, the games that are like that on the PlayStation. You board. know what I found out that was pretty cool about the, the Diablo on Switch is that they have the um, single screen. Like, so if you want to play like four player on the same thing, you can be playing like you can either be playing on two Switches or you can be all playing on the same screen with like four Joy-Cons and stuff. And I thought that was like a really cool like multiplayer experience. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I bet it would be way more fun with homies. Yeah. Sky's in with that dark text. <laughs> We're in night mode, so I had to zoom in and check out. Dude, what's up, man? You came back again. M- much appreciated. Yeah, it's definitely pretty grindy, but yeah, if I got that homie, I want to play some sort of cooperative game on PlayStation 4 with, with Clem, for sure. But man, what else do we have to say about this game besides it's like it's such a disappointment for me, man? Uh, it, I do see that in the notes here, it's getting like a 5 out of 10 on most of. It's, it has like the lowest Metacritic rating as any Bethesda game in, since Rogue War. Warrior, which any of you guys played that on Xbox 360, it is a travesty, but it's almost like so bad it's good, you know? <laughs> I love the games like that, yeah. dude. I, I need to get some more games like that. Like, I played this one game called uh, SWAT on stream that okay. was like absolutely horrible, and I kept dying on the same mission like probably 20 times, and I was screaming at the screen or whatever, but it was like fun in like a frustrating way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Van remembers. <laughs> Van remembers. This old lady kept on coming around the corner, and like, so one time I actually threw a grenade around the corner and blew her up, and I was like, mission accomplished, <laughs> yeah. right? And they're like, no. Mission failed, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Serious Sam? That's a pretty fun game. All right. All yeah. Right. But I've anywho, heard about the Serious Sam series for sure. Broke Warrior. What? What was that game like? Is it a first-person shooter though, or what is that? It's like a third-person action platformer. I think I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly. But a lot of people were like. It's like that teddy bear game on PlayStation Three. Like people hate it, but they hate it so much they love it, kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. There's a, it's just it's broken. There's like a lot of aspects to it broken. I never I never completed it. I remember buying it, playing it for an hour, and being like, I'm on the f- side of the fence where it's just bad. <laughs> so I'm not gonna complete this. Oh shit. So you don't like well no, you like Ooga Booga. I was gonna say like you don't ironically like bad movies then. <laughs> I mean there's not that ma- I'm more of a snob when it comes to movies, I would say, than most other mediums. Um uh, no, I like Hanson, so I'm like definitely not. <laughs> I'm not, not a, a music snob. That's not too bad. Sure. I'm just happy when I hear people like are super passionate about any artist. Really, that's just my thing. I like. I love that people love music enough to go see an artist. Because if you, I mean, there's so many people. I work in. A, I work at a corporation where there's just a lot of like vanilla people, or like you know, there's just people that I don't know about, or I don't really know their personalities that much, and they don't really go to concerts that often. So like when I hear somebody's like loves an artist or loves a band or loves somebody so much to go see him live i'm just okay you do you even if i don't like country or i don't yeah, like yeah no respect to people liking their own shit and i feel so bad honestly this is like a weird kind of tangent but i've been seeing this like weird shaming of people about video games lately it's been like a, a really big thing like where um video games are a drain on adult men and like their energy should be would be better used 
at work, you know? And, like, there's just this shaming of gamers going on right now. It's like now. we're going for full circle. It's awful to be a nerd throughout the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and then now as soon as we get the the Marvel tent, the Marvel Studios movies out and all that stuff, Transformers into, are the biggest movies of the year, you know? Like, well, it's yeah. awesome to be a nerd. But like, you're saying people are starting to go back in shame or oh, we're reverting? Yeah. No, it's like some Bill Maher shit or whatever his name <laughs> is. But anyway, Don't get me... Don't get us start on Bill Maher. <laughs> He's... T- Trashing our homie, rest in peace, Stan Lee. But we got uh, Mitch in the chat, Uber, Uber Gosu Pro 69. Love yeah, it. Yeah, it's missing the 420. I think you're going to have to get a name change on that, dude. <laughs> It'd almost be too long at that point, right? <laughs> I guess, dude. But, but he's just saying, yeah, Monster Hunter is probably going to be a boring experience if you're on your own. And that's what you were doing, right? Yeah, it was, okay. I was doing it solo, and it was really, really boring. Okay. Um, it was like, honestly, the, the all the classes were really unique and cool, but like, it was really boring alone, but um, so we only got 15 minutes left, so we're gonna try to burn through this. So we're hoping for some good DLC for Fallout 76 to convince us to buy it anyway. Um, games like Sky, uh, No Man's Sky and Destiny have like uh, released awesome DLC that have like totally turned the game around, totally reinvigorated their communities. <laughs> so we're hoping for a similar thing so that we can be some wastelanders out there, you know? Um, Man, it's a triple A game, right? Bethesda's a triple A game studio. I've got faith that they'll do do what's right for the millions of people that probably bought, pre-ordered and bought this game, you know? And yeah, Fallout is huge. It's one of my favorite, favorite series, so they've got to fix this game. Yeah, sadly, a lot of the reviews I'm seeing are saying the game is uh, inherently broken in its game design, and we're probably honestly not going to see too much from them sadly um so what other games have you been disappointed by that have like been like under unfinished when they were released like off the top of your head if you can think of any like hmm. do you have a good example to yeah start no I, i've been burned by blizzard so okay. many fucking times they are the masters of releasing an unreleased product and then just like updating it to the point where it's playable. <laughs> Destiny 2. Yeah, Destiny. Well, that's not really... That's in the Blizzard store, but it's not a Blizzard game. So okay. it's like... Uh, that, that that one's kind of like, eh. But like, almost every World of Warcraft expansion okay. on release has been like broken horribly in some way. Um, I'm, I come from a Nintendo background, especially over this last like five-ish years. A little... A good amount of Xbox One. But like... Nintendo is really good about releasing a polished product that really doesn't need to be updated because they really couldn't with the Wii. Like, well, no. If you think about it, they have a lot of experience with like not being able to change their shit. I mean, like yeah. think about cartridges, cartridges man. Yeah. Like, I, th- that was like written in stone, yeah. dude. Like, ET was released on uh, what was it? NES, like the worst game ever. <laughs> There is, like, a landfill in Vegas with, like, a million of, like, copies of that shit or whatever. They couldn't even give them away. They couldn't get rid of them, dude. (laughs) They didn't want to pay for the landfill, like, area. They just buried them out there. It's true. Like, there was articles last year where they were digging that up, like, that burial ground. I never had an Atari at any point. Nope, me neither. I got an NES was my first gaming console. My dad actually bought it right after I was born. Used to play, like, I used to remember watching him play Tetris while I was, like, very young, like two, three, four. Yeah, I have video footage of me in diapers playing um, Mario Bros. Like, I'm actually like, you can see me like running because I thought that made me go faster <laughs> in the game, like trying to like go like this, you know? And, oh like, man! Uh, so definitely came from a gaming family. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your pinky out when yeah. you. <laughs> so what do we got? Do you want to end the show with uh, some Smash Bros. Ultimate stuff to look forward to? Because by the time we're coming back at you guys with Total Geek Gamescast episode 4 two weeks from tonight. Smash Bros. will be out in a full weekend. I mean, hopefully uh, Trey and I can get together and play some Smash Bros. that weekend at some point. Uh, so yeah, dude, I'm super jazzed on it. I'm not going to be able to pre-order it, but Trey's going to have it. So, Ugh, Dude, I'm going to, I'm thinking, so depending on what time I get it, Friday, I'm probably thinking about just doing a 24-hour stream. <sighs> but I, or, I, I so I, I take that off the record. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna play as long as I humanly can because I know it myself 
and I know a 24 hour stream is straight out. Yeah. So like, <laughs> totally. But uh, I'm but, gonna go fucking hard on this game. Yeah, dude. Uh, so it's actually our friend's birthday party that night. Oh yeah. So no, that's why I texted Gail. I'm like, go figure. Shane's birthday is on the night that fucking Smash comes <laughs> out. Like, go fucking figure. But I get off work at 3 p.m. I'm down to just come on over right after, and we can play until we have to leave. Yeah, like, get, get I your ass over down. here. Yeah. Let's let's unlock some characters, dude. So do you have any? details that you're like soup that we've just heard about or uh, uh so it has the most pre-orders of a nintendo game to date so that's great news for nintendo um they had taken a resting period after like before the release of the switch um which is not a good sign for a business or for a company usually and um it was to like rethink their business plans with switch and stuff and i think they're on the upward trajectory with this and they're like back as, in my opinion, a kingpin of gaming, um, when, like, between the Wii and the Wii U, I had no interest in them as a company. Like, I thought the motion, the mandatory motion controls in a lot of games was ridiculous. But I think they are on the right track, and they are using their head brains, which yeah, is dude. important. So. Dude, the Switch is my favorite console <clears throat> right now. But, like I said, I still have to play those PlayStation experiences. I do love my Xbox One. Uh, and I do know, like, soon the, the Switch is going to eclipse the Xbox in sales. So, I mean, the P PlayStation 4, I believe, is getting close to 80. And Microsoft stopped sharing their Xbox One numbers at 20 million. And that was, like, a year ago. So they're probably barely to 30. Uh, but the Switch is about to 20-something. Already. So, yeah, dude, I'm right with you. Nintendo's doing crazy numbers. Three million copies of Pokemon sold. I wonder what Smash Bros. Ultimate can do, you know? Oh, um, I'm excited to see it. I hope it's something crazy, and I hope that it's a, um, like, a sensation, you know, because I would love to be a part of a really big Smash community, you know, because I've been playing that game, like... Since I remember seeing it, I used to get um, a magazine called Game Informer. And oh, yeah. I saw, like, some spoiler. Like, oh, yeah. it was, like, the hardcore gamer magazine, you know? Like, it wasn't that frilly Nintendo Power shit. Oh, <laughs> man. I had Nintendo Power subscription, Game Pro, Game Informer, <laughs> uh, ga Tips and Tricks. Oh, it was Expert Gamer. My bad. Oh, it I was, was going like, to say. Some off brand. I was, was going to say, Game Informer got, like, t sold out. And they went, like, the yeah, whole GameStop yeah, route. No, they, they're very GameStop. That's my mistake. But, um... Anyways, I saw it like in that in um, like a preview for that game in there, and I was like, "What in the fuck is this shit?" So I I had to pre-order that shit, and I played Smash Bros. The day it came out back in the day, dude. I remember going over to my friend Josh McLean's house, and it was the first. I just had moved to the neighborhood. It was summer of '99, and they were all playing. I'm pretty sure it was summer of '99. Shit. No. I don't know. But uh, they were all playing Smash Bros. I had never played before. And I saw this character that was like, looked like a little boy. And I was like, dude, that's who I'm going to be. He has a baseball bat and a yo yo. I loved yo yos. <laughs> and I, that's where I discovered Ness, dude. And that's like, now to this day, Earthbound. I went back and played Earthbound, one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, no, definite. I didn't get to really experience Earthbound because it was a little expensive and they didn't. Um, you would have to buy like the Super Nintendo re release or whatever. The Marvel vs. Capcom $200 version with Infinity Stones? Um, I haven't seen that. What do you mean? Is it just like one version of it has Infinity Stones in it and it's super expensive because of that? Damn, like, dog. Those collector's editions are getting a little bit wacky. Dude, I am no longer like, okay, I don't pre-order games like in general. Um, Smash Bros. is like a weird anomaly. I'm, I don't like contributing to that culture of games being released unfinished you know but um i don't i don't know <laughs> to get the discounted games on amazon you kind of have to pre-order you know because sure. they you have to pre if you get the game pre-ordered within two weeks of it it coming out you get the 20 percent off i believe so that's the only reason why i would pre-order i'm pretty sure i did that with red dead uh, but <laughs> yeah no i mean the super nintendo classic was only like what is that like 60 bucks or 80 bucks it's 80 bucks, yeah. 79.99 yeah. comes with Earthbound and like 21 other of the best games of all time. Well, no doubt because Earthbound is an $80 game. I think it's um, 150. I have two. Oh, of them. oh, it used to be 80 when I was in like I was really into collecting SNES games, and that's I guess I should have pulled the trigger on that. It's one. on my Holy short shit. list of things I need to sell if I need to like if something happens, like money becomes tight. Like I have two copies of Earthbound, just you know. 
It's pretty tight. Yeah. Those collector's editions are ripoffs, dude. Like, they just sell you, like, the cheapest pieces of shit. Like, them. junkie like, statues. I mean, there are some good ones out there, but it's pretty rare. Yeah, it is rare. Like, um, I, my, one of my stepbrothers, he had, like, got the cl- uh, Master Chief Halo thing with the The mask that little, doesn't go on your face. No, it was a cheap piece of pl- yeah. plastic for 80 bucks. Um. Oh, yeah, you can totally get the remakes on eBay. Yeah, I got actually an Earthbound Zero re- remake or whatever on eBay for like 30 bucks, and that's like the first Earthbound that came out on the NES. But let's let's cap off the show with some... Uh, what did what, we get for the Black Friday? You want to do oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we can do the Black Friday. So, um, Trey, we were just talking about this before the show. The pickups were nuts this year for Black Friday. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I pretty much just stuck to the Steam sales. Um, I like to have all my games in one place, and I'm big into PC gaming, obviously. Um, He's an elite. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, 120 FPS, bro, I can't do anything. Actually, I get, like, 140 FPS. Uh, on, like If I'm running Fortnite, I can do 140. FPS and like I think the switch can only run 30 FPS which is crazy I think to it's think about 60 docked 30 undocked yeah, 720 for sure, for sure I would believe either but um freaking so I ended up pulling the trigger on like a million things I got battle block theater the complete Bioshock series which I'm really excited to pull on uh, um, stream um gloom which is like is I that think, a board game no it's like um by the makers of oh Fuck that shadowy game where you're the kid with the outline, um, where it's like a dark. Fuck, you just it, look like it, a shadow. Not inside. Uh, limbo. Limbo. Yeah. Is, is it really? I'm like eighty percent sure it is. Okay. It at least looks at like that similar vibe. That, that, so that's Play Dead games. What's that? Play Dead. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, what GPU? Um, I've got a 1080 Ti right now. Um, but I'm probably actually gonna eventually buy the 2080 just because I'm obsessive about that like dude the 1080 is like way more than I'll ever need like I mean it's nice to like for when I'm running like uh, max graphics and streaming because that does uh, take a lot but uh, it's definitely way more than I need yeah for <laughs> especially sure. since I play like dumb shitty games most of the time but um so we got the, I also got Hotline Miami, which is like an overhead 80s vibe, um, just like shooter type thing. I got all of the Jackbox party packs, which I'm super excited Dude. about. And like, honestly, I need to invite you over to play with me on stream for them because like, it's always weird um, setting that up because you don't know who's going to show up to the stream, you know, and it, to at least guarantee I'll have some content and we'll at least be able to play games or yeah, something. It would yeah, make yeah. it more fun Eventually we could evolve this into something where we play <clears throat> games for a half hour, hour afterward, and we all chat and hang out. Yeah, no, definitely. What's we could so just, cool about it? Yeah, we could do Jackbox right after stream, like, pretty much every time if we want to do something like that. We but, played Jackbox... <clears throat> Party Pack 5, because that's one of my pickups, and man, that was a blast. Just us and our both of our girlfriends, so much fun. Yeah. So, and as a gift to uh, Wild Dog 84 who I have not seen here uh, yet tonight, I bought uh, Leisure Suit Larry, Magna Cum Laude. Uh, Dude, when I saw that game in Game Informer, <laughs> I was like, what in the world is going on? I'm going to pull up the picture of the Infinity Stones just to show everybody really quick before wow, we're Wow, it looks him. like just Easter eggs, yeah. plastic. Easter eggs. Those don't even look like what the Infinity Stones look like, actually. They look like Fabergé <laughs> eggs that don't even look, like, good. They look like you could crack them open and find, like, chocolate candies inside of it. Oh, my God. $200. <laughs> Dude, Durance Bain, thank you for that. Uh, showing <laughs> us this garbage pile for 200 bucks. <laughs> I just... I, it's so funny. I bought a PS4 with Spider-Man, one of the best games of the year, for 200 bucks, but... We got this garbage for 200 bucks out there. <laughs> that, the, the diehards are going to pay for it, you know? There's going to be some people out there. Dude, I guess some people just, like, love Spider-Man, like, so much that, like, they got to have it. Um, I don't I don't get that mentality. Like, that's just one more thing to clutter up your house, you know? And, I mean, there's exceptions to, like, having cool shit, but, like, is that really the nerd shit you're going to pull the trigger? Like... The one thing your girlfriend's going to let you have on display in the house, dude. <laughs> You're going to waste it on Fabergé eggs <laughs> yeah. based on Infinity Wars. <laughs> like, come on. Such a weird, like, you know, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carry on Stan's legacy for sure. Oh, shit. <laughs> Well, I I think that's all we have time for, unfortunately. I would love to go longer, but we are going to watch our girlfriends uh, play their last volleyball game of the season. They are going to crush it. They are in first place. 
or like playing for first place or something. I think if they win tonight, they win a bunch of trophy things. A lot of something. awards, a lot of the red sports carpet ball is gonna be real. premieres are going to be going on after this. We so. got to go get our tuxes on, you know. Oh, definitely. Rolling Should... in a limo, of course. Oh, obviously, dude. $100 bills on deck all day. Holy shit, dude. Oh my god, the boss is coming over tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Infinity Stones. Hell yeah, man. Well, we appreciate everybody coming out tonight. It was super fun. Appreciate all of the fun chats and feedback and the awesomeness. Um, love you guys long time. Um, but we'll be back in two weeks um, with another episode. Um, and you'll see this shit uploaded. On- Friday morning. Yep, on The Easy Peasy. YouTube channel, you can just go to theeasypeasy.com. That's where it's going to be right there at the top on Friday. Uh, so, yeah, uh, share this with your friends. Let us know also uh, where what we can do better. I mean, Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's something that we're, like, totally fucking up, dude, like, it would be much appreciated if you just, like, let me know, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very much appreciated. For sure. Um, if you enjoyed yourself, uh, toss us a follow. Toss uh, Sean's Twitch a follow. Toss all of his uh, socials a follow, which are all Sean S. Johnson on everything. And we out, bros. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, fellas, and we'll hope to see you soon. Thanks, guys. Cool. That was fun. Damn, dude. I wish I had new.